Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. Over the past four years I've done so many videos on the Great Pyramid and the Giza Plateau that it's hard to navigate back through all the information. So in the coming weeks and months I'll be making a few videos in this top 5 or top 10 format to recap some of the key points to take home, to research and to think about as we try to unravel the mystery of the Great Pyramid. In the world of YouTube, old videos, observations and ideas quickly get forgotten. So in this video, I'll be presenting my top 5 Great Pyramid Mysteries that are still unsolved today in 2021. These are not the obvious ones, for example the Scan Pyramid's voids, but arguably the more obscure yet just as important. Number 5. Gravel in the Grotto my first unsolved mystery of the Great Pyramid that is worthy of further investigation is the Grotto, apparently cut into the top of the natural limestone mound the Great Pyramid sits on. It was cut before the pyramid was built because there is load-bearing masonry inside, and some of these blocks are too large to drag through the small and bendy well shaft. The Grotto is a crude cavity measuring 3 meters by 4 with an average height of 1.5 meters. It divides the well shaft into two parts, an upper and a lower. Inside the grotto there is a pit, dug by people and is around 2 meters in depth. It is clearly there for a reason, and there is a purposefully made well built masonry entrance into the crude upper well shaft from the Grand Gallery. When the pyramid was finished, the grotto was concealed, conserved and hidden, not just filled in. So what is it? The lower part of the well shaft is much cruder than the upper, and I believe that this is because the lower part was dug much later, maybe even after the pyramid was complete. Originally, it seems to have just been a grotto connected to the Grand Gallery via the upper well shaft, and not connected to the lower descending passageway. This is all a mystery in itself, but most don't know that the walls of the grotto are not limestone bedrock, but earth, sand and gravel that is now hard to the touch. The ceiling is loosely packed gravel with damp sand, and you could even dig your fingers into it and remove handfuls of this strange, seemingly out of place material. In a video I made around two years ago, I gave my own interpretation that the grotto is in fact the point of a natural spring bringing earth, sand and gravel up into this cavity with the groundwater below. The material is a byproduct of the water entering the structure. It reminded me of Silbury Hill, which is also the place of a number of natural springs with deposits of earth, sand and gravel in layers, brought to the surface with water through the chalk bedrock. If my idea is correct, this location on the Giza Plateau was probably chosen to build a pyramid because of the spring. Water could have been harnessed to aid construction, just as a number of models suggest. An Arab report from the 9th century talks of a splash of water that was heard when stones were thrown down the well from above. And of course, reports also say it still remains damp to this day. The well shaft and the grotto are a mystery waiting to be solved. The earth, sand and gravel need sampling and analysing. The earth needs to be radiocarbon dated, and the grotto walls and ceiling need to be dug back to the bedrock so we can finally get to the bottom of this mystery. Either that or a geophysical technique. Number 4. Quartz Sand Filling Voids in 1985, Jules Dormian and Jean-Patrice Goyden drilled through the wall of the horizontal passage leading to the Queen's Chamber, and this is because voids were found after geophysical work was undertaken. They discovered the cavity was filled with sand, but not the calcite sand of the Giza Plateau, but homogeneous fine-grained sand consisting of 99% quartz. It was obviously carefully sifted by the pyramid builders. Compositional analysis showed the sand's closest match was a site near El Tor in southern Sinai, located hundreds of kilometres away. I made a video on this subject a couple of years ago, and, as I explained, there is geophysical evidence for a corridor, leading from the northern wall of the Queen's Chamber and running parallel with the horizontal passageway. 
I believe that this quartz sand was used as a filler to backfill a number of pyramid passages and chambers. Limestone or calcite sand, the stuff of Giza, can congeal. It can dissolve in acidic water and then recrystallize. Chemically, it's more unstable than quartz. The grains are more angular and also have a higher compressibility. As you may know, quartz is a more stable form of sand, insoluble in water, it doesn't congeal or recrystallize in normal conditions and it's strong. It really is the perfect filler material for chambers, passages or simple masonry voids. It allows the sand filled chambers to be reaccessed in the future if need be. And, even if not, it adds strength to these chambers, corridors and voids if ever the structure subsided. It makes the pyramid a stronger structure instead of just leaving open voids or filling them with the Giza calcite sand. But this is just my interpretation of the evidence. It's still a mystery and does require further attention, whether further borehole sampling or maybe other geophysical techniques. Maybe the Scan Pyramids project haven't found all of the hidden chambers and passages in the Great Pyramid, and that's because they've been completely filled up with quartz sand, and so they don't show up on scans. Number 3. The Iron Plate of the Great Pyramid Still unexplained to this day is an iron plate, found within the core masonry of the Great Pyramid during the Howard Weiss years of exploration at Giza. The plate measures 26 by 8.8 centimeters and is 4 millimeters in thickness, discovered by J.R. Hill, an engineer who worked for Howard Weiss. The iron plate was found embedded into a joint between blocks on the southern face of the monument, near to or within the entrance of the so-called air shaft that leads down to the king's chamber. Hill was adamant it was contemporaneous with the construction of the pyramid, as he had to blast away two outer layers of limestone blocks to reach it. The plate was eventually donated to the British Museum and was examined in 1926 by Dr. A. Lucas. The iron was not meteoric, and so he dismissed the idea it dated back to the time of the pyramid's construction, as we are told the Egyptians could not forge iron at this point in history. But in 1989, Dr. M. P. Jones of Imperial College London and Dr. L. Geyer of the Faculty of Petroleum and Minerals in Suez, Egypt did a full scientific study and they fully believe the plate was incorporated into the pyramid at the time of construction. The plate contained very small traces of gold and so the experts believe it was once gilded. Originally, it was thought to have been square in shape, roughly the same size as the air shaft's mouth which is half a royal cubit. But the mystery is why the iron plate is officially referred to as a piece of spade or shovel that was used by Arab explorers. Did these early explorers really use iron shovels covered in gold? Well, that's very unlikely. Furthermore, when the early Arab explorers entered the pyramid, it was still covered in casing stones, which makes the concept of men climbing up the southern side of the Great Pyramid and breaking off part of a shovel beneath two layers of core masonry, three including the casing stones, extremely unlikely. Number 2. The Second Door of the King's Chamber we all know the strange paradox regarding the king's chamber that the sarcophagus is too big to fit through the door, meaning it must have been put in place during construction, before the chamber was complete. This idea does seem nonsensical. What if something went wrong? What if it was broken or there was a defect? They would have to smash it up to remove it, and then make a smaller sarcophagus to replace it, to get it through the door. But Jean-Pierre Houdin may provide a better idea, that there is actually a second doorway into the king's chamber. There is one block of granite in the northern wall, located directly in front of the sarcophagus, which is slightly larger in dimensions, meaning the sarcophagus could fit through. But this block is unusual. To its right, the joint is wider than others in the chamber, and the block even sticks out by a tiny amount. There is a major crack on the block directly above and another crack in the overlying block's top right hand corner. This block would have acted as a lintel and the cracks indicate that the block directly beneath did not support this lintel. 
This doorway stone is not load bearing. There is some clearance between the two, and these cracks on the upper block are likely there because of subsidence in the chamber, something we know has affected the King's Chamber a great deal. In 1986, a microgravimetry survey also showed there is a cavity behind the north wall, precisely at the position of the second door. So, what's behind the door? Well, that really is the real mystery. Houdan believes it leads to another set of passages and chambers that may well link up with the two voids that were found by the Scan Pyramids project a few years ago, including the now blocked original main entrance. In my opinion, this specific mystery needs to be solved and could well answer many of the questions we have concerning this enigmatic structure. Number 1. No footage or photographs of the Queen's Chamber Northern Shaft For me personally, this Great Pyramid mystery is number 1, but ironically I may be close to solving it whilst making this video. In all of my Great Pyramid research over the past four years, I realised there was next to no information available to the public on this northern shaft. And the information that is out there is incredibly hard to find, unless you've got access to certain university libraries. Back in the 1990s, Rudolf Gantenbrink explored three of the Great Pyramid's so-called air shafts with his robot, releasing photographs as well as detailed CAD diagrams and key observations of what he saw. It's compelling and important information, but even this information is now sadly lost. This is because in the past 12 months, Gantenbrink's website went offline, and the website address was re-registered by somebody else completely unrelated to Rudolf Gantenbrink. But for those that don't know, I did cover the main points in my 90 minute Great Pyramid documentary, which I've linked below in the description. After Gantenbrink, a new team was led by Zahi Hawass in association with National Geographic to explore the Queen's Chamber shafts further, to open the famous door in the southern shaft that was found by Gantenbrink nearly 10 years before. This was shown live on TV, and as you all know, there was a huge anticlimax because nothing was found behind the door. But when the cameras went off, the team then explored the northern shaft, which bends considerably and had never been explored in full before. Because of the bendy nature of the shaft, Gantenbrink's robot couldn't move around the corners, so only the early section was explored and documented. But the new mission that was led by Zahi Hawass, with a new robot called Pyramid Rover, did navigate the shaft, and at the end they also found another small doorway. So, what's the big mystery? Well, this work was done nearly 20 years ago, and still no footage, no diagrams, no detailed observations are readily available, or they're incredibly difficult to find. There is just this one photo of the door. No book mentions this shaft in great detail, and for the past few months I've been unable to get my hands on any paper on the subject. Where is the footage and where are the photographs? Where is the report? So far I've sent three emails to Dr Hawass asking specific questions about this shaft and so far there's been no reply. In the back of a book that was written by Zahi Hawass, he does reference one paper, titled The Recent Investigations of the So-Called Doors Inside the Great Pyramid, written by Hawass, Waters and Sandriel. But as far as I can see, this paper was never released to the public, or it's lost inside a book I can't access. The reason I want to access this information is because I predict there should be a very specific anomaly located in a very specific position inside the shaft, and this could well add solid evidence to my idea the pyramid was enlarged, either a change of plan during construction or maybe at a later date. But even aside from my own hypothesis, this shaft is probably the most interesting in the Great Pyramid. Not only does it bend considerably, which is very odd in itself, but this is the shaft where the dolerite ball, the piece of wood and metal hook were discovered in the 19th century. I made a video in January of this year regarding more lost relics in the Great Pyramid, where I showed Rudolf Gantenbrink's images from the early part of the northern shaft before it bends. 
There is possibly even more wood inside the shaft, a square section wooden rod, although it could be metal and was left there by the Edgar brothers who explored the shaft in the early 20th century. At the end of it we can see this strange rectangular structure, maybe a broken slab of rock, but maybe it's something else. There is also another piece of metal, and just like the metal hook, it also contains two holes. It looks like a fastening, likely used together with the iron hook to connect it to the wooden rod. During the Pyramid Rover mission of 2002, all of these anomalies would have been seen in greater detail. But again, nearly 20 years later, and no footage of the inside of this shaft is available. This is a mystery that I really want to solve, and yesterday, after writing the script and recording the audio for this video, I set to work once again, and with all hope seemingly lost, I ended up turning to my brilliant followers on Twitter. Following this, three new lines of research regarding this specific pyramid mystery have opened up, and I may now be a step closer in solving it. Whilst I'm waiting on further information and emails, all I'll say is that all will be revealed in a coming video. But I will just say this one thing. The paper I'm looking for that was referenced by Hawass in the back of his book, The Recent Investigations of the So-Called Doors Inside the Great Pyramid, actually makes two spelling mistakes in the names of the co-authors of the paper. It's not Waters, it's Watters. And it's not Sandriel, his name is actually Sondriel. And those spelling mistakes alone were the key reason I couldn't find any information about this shaft. But now that I know, everything is changing. So that wraps up my top 5 Great Pyramid Mysteries that are still unsolved. There are of course countless more, but for me, these 5 are all solvable, and some of them easily so. I want to keep these 5 mysteries in the public eye. Why is there gravel in the grotto? Why is there quartz sand filling voids near the Queen's Chamber? What is the true origin of the iron plate? What's behind the second door of the King's Chamber? And what did Pyramid Rovers see in the Queen's Chamber northern shaft in 2002? All of these questions can be answered, and all of them have major implications regarding the true history of the Great Pyramid. And as stated, I may now be a step closer in solving one of them. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.